Hey everyone, it's Josh Dine from Giants Fitness and Wellness, and I am here today to go in depth on my personal story. Um, I am trying not to script this too much because I really want to keep this real and unfiltered and almost just how I would explain my story, um, just raw and, and genuine. Um, so I don't want to waste any time. This, I think this is going to be a bit of a longer video today, so I just want to get right on into this. So I grew up in a small town uh, called Haddon Heights in South Jersey, um, right outside Philadelphia. Um, I grew up with two parents, uh, awesome parents, and my brother Alec. And uh, my brother and I both grew up huge baseball fans. So I think uh, baseball and sports was always a foundational piece of myself. And I think maybe that is what um, really instilled that passion towards like working towards a greater purpose and almost just having that drive to always win. Um, along with that, I think something that's impacted me a whole lot as well is that my father, I think was always a pretty good example for me. So uh, two things I wanna to touch on about that. Uh, my dad has always worked in government. He's always worked in law. And um, one thing that I've seen from my father from an extremely young age is that he would be so excited to go into work every single day. And I remember even being in elementary school and just recognizing how powerful that was. Like seeing someone in the morning just excited to get dressed and enjoying their routine and excited to, to get to work and to feel fulfilled from the act that they're doing at work. I could just recognize the importance of that from such a young age and I think that has stuck with me forever. So I just wanted to mention that um, before we move along. So, um, I went to Haddon Heights High School. I was a baseball player. Um, I was always really passionate about baseball and I thought I was gonna go to school, to college, to play uh, college baseball. But I made the difficult decision not to and a big factor of that was because it was coming pretty apparent to me that uh, as passionate as I was about baseball, I was substantially more passionate about working out. And most people that I played baseball with could tell you that. Um, I, I just was obsessed. Like it, it, it was always just something I loved doing. And I wanna get into how I fell in love with working out. So I grew up always very overweight and um, going in and out of doctor's offices, it would be very apparent even just looking at me how overweight I was. So doctors would talk about the health risks that come along with that and would tell my parents and I that I need to lose weight. But let's be real, telling someone that you have to lose weight is useless. Like that doesn't give you any motive or any direction or anything. Um, so like I, I would try to maybe go for a run outside and then I'd feel like I was having an asthma attack because I was so overweight and couldn't run and that would just lead me to feel discouraged so I'd feel hopeless and this cycle would repeat itself for years and years until I just had absolutely no confidence that I was going to change. So I kind of was pretty overweight most of my childhood and even to my teenage years and um, even playing baseball my whole life, it was definitely a bit of a struggle compared to other people. Like I could not do what most people could do due to my physical limitations. And that was absolutely discouraging. I remember just deciding that I was gonna join the gym. And I was like a freshman in high school, I had no idea. My dad said he would pay for it, which I was grateful for. So we joined the gym. So the first few times I'd go to the gym, I kind of had no idea what I was doing and just kind of feeling it out, trying different machines, doing stuff wrong. Probably people were recording me and posting videos online of me doing weird stuff. Um, I remember I had a consultation with the trainer that worked at the gym. Trainer was a complete, excuse me, I'm trying to be rude, but like completely was trying to take advantage of the fact that I was a kid and was trying to get me excited and was trying to get me to convince my parents to sign me up for personal training, which I did not need at that time. Um, so I remember I kind of dabbled at the gym for a year or two, just sticking with it and, and really just going because my dad was going. And then I remember leaving that gym and going to a more local mom and pop gym called Royal Fitness. And I remember being with a friend and we were doing leg press machine. And I remember just loading up a plate on the leg press machine, getting down there, feeling the weight of that, and then pushing it for repetitions. And that was so enjoyable in itself. And when I stood up, just feeling the energy that that brought me, but not feeling like it killed me and not feeling like that my body wasn't able to do it was the most empowering, reassuring feeling in the world. And I will never forget that moment. That was the moment I knew that I was in love with that and that was just the beginning of something great. And from that moment, I went to YouTube and I would fall asleep 
every single night watching different YouTube videos on hypertrophy training, on strength training, on nutrition, on all different aspects of health just to learn more because I was so interested. Some of you watch The Biggest Loser. One of the trainers right now is Steve Cook. Uh, probably 10, 11 years ago, I found Steve Cook on YouTube and he was one of the first people that really impacted me in a positive way. And I am so grateful for him. That went on for years where I would just go to the gym, fall asleep every night watching videos, watching videos on what I was gonna do the next day to study and plan and just doing that for years. And I was completely, completely aware of how in love with it I was. Other people were starting to be aware of how in love with it I was. Um, some of my baseball coaches were even concerned that I was making that more of a priority than baseball, which I certainly was. And this is important. I remember sometimes different people coming up to me talking about how I should make a career out of fitness. And I remember at the time thinking well, like, no, I was always taught that there's no money in there and that I can pursue a career like law or finances and make really good money. And I think that was really important to hear that because then I had to further along down the line realize how wrong that was. So fast forward, I finished up high school. I decided to go to Rowan University. Uh, I go to Rowan University, meet some awesome people, endure some awesome experiences. Um, and then from there, I kind of lost sight of myself. And when I lost sight of myself, I found myself a bit depressed. Um, so I finished that first year at Rowan, and after that, I decided to just take a semester off um, because I was really not in a good place. So because of the strength training that I was doing in high school and even up until college, I was pretty physically healthy up until college. Once I got to college, I kind of let myself go a little bit. And when I physically let myself go, I emotionally and mentally let myself go five times worse. And the result of that left me basically isolated for months at a time. Um, once I took that break, I didn't leave my room for months. I just remember being so, so depressed and not even having the ability to think clearly and being aware that I didn't have the ability to think clearly. And it was all these factors accumulating were so overwhelming to the point where I just wanted to be numb and not think of anything and just do nothing all the time. And I've said this before in a video, but I'll say it again. I'll never forget realizing how bad I was when I looked outside and I just saw someone just casually going, through, going for a walk on a nice day and thinking to myself briefly, like, oh, I could go for a walk. And then right after that, immediately recognizing how far away I actually was from even getting myself to go out that front door and to go outside and go for a walk. I was nowhere even close. I, like, truthfully, I was probably a month away of work from even being able to get outside and go for a walk. But I, I can wholeheartedly say that that experience made me the person that I am. That's what shaped my perspective of health. That's what really taught me a lot about gratitude. I feel like you hear this a lot of time in a lot of different ways. A lot of different people talk about stories like this. Well, they'll get hit with such intense bouts of adversity. And in a weird way, that adversity taught them life lessons that changed their life forever. And I'm not saying that that was my adversity. Like there are people that have gone through much more intense adversity and that's not my last bit of adversity. I'm gonna go through harder things in life, I imagine. But I will say I am so grateful for everything that I went through and I think it 100% contributed to me being the person that I am. So how I started getting myself out of that, I think step one was really just awareness. And I think I started being aware of the fact that like, I was literally having, like there are people that work weeks at a time and, and, and make so much progress on their lives and full 24 hour days were going by where I wouldn't have a single thing to show for it. I wouldn't even have learned something. Like I would just be watching mindless things all day. So my first focus I remember was trying to consume things that at least helped me. And um, instead of watching mindless YouTube videos, I would watch YouTube videos on, like lectures or books or read books or listen to podcasts about health. And I immediately noticed a difference in that. It was almost the sense of satisfaction of just knowing I was being productive and I wasn't wasting time. But I feel like once I started learning more about those things, it really created some momentum. And I feel like from there, I started getting into more motivational figures like Tony Robbins and uh, at the time, Gary Vaynerchuk. And I think that helped me create some momentum. 
And that was maybe a few month process. And then from there, I decided that I was ready to get myself a job. That way, all this time I was wasting, at least I could have a number value tied to that to that time. So um, I got myself a job at Wawa. Um, for some of you don't live on the uh, East Coast, Wawa is uh, basically like a uh, convenience store. It's a gas station store, it's super crowded, super popular in Jersey, Philly. Um, and that was a really good experience too. It sucked. Like working at Wawa was not fun, but one of the best experiences of my life. And I can wholeheartedly say that uh, when I have a kid one day, I want my kid to work a customer service job like that because I think you learn things about life, you learn things about people, how to deal with people, how to deal with managers, how to deal with coworkers. They're invaluable. So I worked at Wawa for a few years, saved up to become a personal trainer because at that point I decided that it was important enough to me that I wanted to make it a career. So I saved up to become um, a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer, took the exam. The first time I took the exam, I was one question short. I needed a 70 to pass, I had a 69. Um, so I remember that moment being so upset, like thinking that I just made the wrong decision and, and crying my eyes out. One thing I remember was not trying to avoid how I felt. So I remember trying to give my, I gave myself maybe four hours of just letting it out and feeling that pain because it was a painful experience. But once that pain passed, all that was there was drive. All that was there was drive. Like I was just ready. I had some almost anger, but I purely put that towards my drive. And I told myself, I'm going to schedule that for the next test for as soon as they would possibly allow me I scheduled it for less than a week. I just studied it nonstop, nonstop for a week and absolutely aced that test the second time I did it. And um, I almost think that was like reassurance of my journey that like sometimes things aren't meant to just go as planned. Sometimes things are, you're gonna slip up. You're not always perfect and you're gonna make mistakes. But the way you react to those mistakes is directly what defines your success. Like me, I don't find anything wrong with me going through my depression and being isolated for a few months because that really, really was hard. Um, some people may not understand something like that and may almost judge because it seems pretty easy to just get yourself out of bed. But what I'm proud of is the fact that it didn't get to me. Like I overcame that, that didn't overcome me. And if everything that I go through in life, I can eventually overcome, I'm gonna be successful. It, I think big pieces of that are patience. And you're, you can't always, T.D. Jakes uses this analogy, you can't always just force a storm to run out of rain, right? Sometimes you're in the midst of a storm, and when you're in the middle of a storm, you can't see an end forward, you can't see any end to your left and your right, it sounds like everything is just chaos, there's no end in sight. But you can't rely on your senses in those cases. In those cases, you need faith to carry you through. If you have faith that those hard times aren't gonna last and you're gonna outlast those hard times, you will get through it. So we'll fast forward. I got the job at Wawa, became a personal trainer. I left Wawa and I applied to get a job at Edge Fitness. So I was still in school when I applied to work at this big gym, Edge Fitness. And when I applied, I remember them calling me and they said, hey, we got your application. Um, unfortunately, we're not willing to hire any college students. And I said, you know what, that's fair. But I do want to let you know this. I am willing to make this my life. Like, I am willing to go to class and be a trainer. That's it. Like I don't need anything else. I am really passionate about this. I will. I am committed to making this work if you guys you give me an opportunity. But I absolutely understand if you're looking for a candidate who has a degree. And fortunately, um, I believe it was Dennis, the guy I spoke to, he gave me the chance, which I am super appreciative of. And uh, I've never looked back. Um, working at Edge allowed me to work with some really great managers, great trainers that completely made me the trainer that I am today. And I gathered so much great experience working at Edge Fitness. So I worked at Edge Fitness for about two and a half years. And then our good old friend, COVID entered the equation. Once COVID happened, we were so unsure of what was gonna happen. And, uh, like everybody, everyone was just confused. So uh, about six months into the lockdown, I had a lot of my clients continue to reach out to me because we were uncertain as everybody. So I started out by doing some virtual sessions. Virtual sessions were good. We were grateful because it was better than nothing. Uh, over time, we decided the virtual wasn't ideal 
and we wanted to get outside. So when the summertime came, we got outside, we started hosting social distanced workouts and we'd have like two or three people at a time, nice and spaced out. And especially in a time like quarantine, I feel like every one of my clients and I were just so grateful for the human interaction. But we would all just be so excited and grateful to see each other and to talk and to be in each other's presence and to be outside in the sun. And I think it was just a really good reminder of like what fitness is about. It's just, it makes us feel good in the moment. It makes our days more enjoyable. It helps us sleep at night. Yes, it's about long-term goals, but it's also about what it does for us in the moment. So I think that was kind of a, a reminder of that. And with how those workouts were going outside, that was what led me and my girlfriend Jordan helped me set this up, um, starting JS Fitness and Wellness. So uh, when I was at Edge, I met my girlfriend Jordan, and um, Jordan was the uh, kids coach of the kids club at Edge, and I was the lead trainer. So we met, and our relationship started out really, really slow, and we took things very gradual, and um, from there things got really serious, and we haven't looked back since, and. That is absolutely my rock. That's my best friend. And I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for her. This business would not exist if it wasn't for her. So shout out to Jordan for that. So once um, the workouts were going pretty successful outside, Jordan was a really, really big motivator in pushing me to start this business because I honestly was filled with a lot of doubt. Jordan and I are really good partners for a lot of reasons, but I think one of them is because we have really different skill sets. And Jordan's really, really aesthetic and number oriented with her thinking and i feel like i'm very idea process word oriented and with that being said i feel like we both brainstormed in our separate ways and it really came together to kind of piece together a complete vision of what this place could be and not only what this place could be but how this place could run and how it could run successfully so we really saw that and we saw that as opportunity and we took it and Jordan especially, like we, we took a month to get this whole place ready and Jordan and her family and it came here and we just grinded for a month and got this thing done. And I am so grateful for that. And um, as of November, 2020, JS Fitness and Wellness was open for business and we have been here since. And uh, it has been quite the ride. It has been quite the ride. Worked with hundreds of clients since we've been opened here met so many great people, made amazing connections. To be completely honest, the biggest thing that I'm proud of is the honest and genuine fulfillment I feel from helping people. And the reason I say that is because I just love knowing that like when people can't afford to train, they can just stop. I know that when people are paying for training here that they are getting the best deal that they're gonna get around. I know that when people are here in front of me, they are getting taken care of, they are getting a good experience, and above all things, they are gonna walk out of this place feeling better when they came in. And to be completely honest, it's honestly hard for me to appreciate myself and how far I've come sometimes because I was once this person who desperately needed health and fitness help so bad. And now I'm on the complete end of that where I am just helping people get into this because I know how powerful it is. So I know this video is kind of all over the place, but I just wanted to kind of do a deeper dive of my personal story and go into some details that maybe some of you guys haven't heard before so you can really get more of an understanding as to why I am the kind of person that I am and that why I run the business that I run. So the next phase of my business is YouTube. My goal is that I can grow my business through YouTube because it's completely free. I don't wanna do sponsorships. I don't wanna sell anything. I wanna help people. And then by helping people with videos and honest information, I hope that more people can see those videos. And over time, I can just simply make money from these videos by helping people with helpful information. Thank you guys so much for watching. To anyone who's been supporting me, I can't even stress enough how grateful I am. Like this is my dream and you are directly helping my dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to talk about anything I talked about in this video, drop a comment below, hit that like button, hit the 